you. Hello, friends. This is Michelle, and I am from Creativity for Kids in Faber Castell. I have with me Meredith, who you can't miss because she is wearing a beautiful blue hat. And today we are going to make what's called a hat, not hate, quick knit loom hat. And this hat is so special to us, but I know all of you are probably really excited to dive in. So I'm going to kick it off to Meredith and she'll get us started. And then I will be on with some tips and some information about hat not hate. And if you have any questions, feel free to use the chat. Mary will be helping us there. And um, have a great class. Thanks so much. Wonderful. So thank you everybody for being here. Thank you, Michelle and Mary for helping me out during our class today. And everybody out there, I hope that you are excited as I am about making a beautiful blue hat like this. So we have our kit right here and I'm going to go ahead and open it up and show you what comes inside. Um, but before we begin, begin, we will need a pair of scissors. And if you do not have this kit at home, you can get yourself a round peg loom like this. And it comes with a little tool like that and some lovely blue yarn. And you can um, do this activity with us as well. So before too long, let's go ahead and open up our box and see what we have inside. Ooh, it's really stuffed full. So we've got one, we've got two, three, four skeins of blue yarn. And you can see this blue yarn is really thick and fluffy and squishy. And it's really, really pretty with all the ombre blue in here, all these different shades of blue. It's very pretty. And then we have our loom like this. And our handy dandy instructions. And our tools that you will need. All right here. And actually, I think we have a couple things from another kit that I'll have to grab. Right here. Aha, this little baggie. And there's some important things in here for making our pom poms and putting our fun little faux leather tag on. So we've got that as well. All right, so I'm curious to know has anyone else heard of the quick knit loom? Because we have done a quick knit loom, our company Creativity for Kids, we have another version of our quick knit loom. And it comes with the same type of loom and some rainbow yarn. So this is a very special kit because it comes with all of this beautiful blue yarn. But essentially, it is the same craft that you're doing. So if you've done the other one, you've had some practice. And good for you because this is just as fun as that one. So Michelle will tell us a little bit more about that after we start. So let's go ahead and look at our instructions and let's have an overhead view for that. Thank you. So our quick knit loom, what we have is our round loom, ta-da, our yarn that's enough to make two hats, we have our needle threader, a needle, a knitting hook that we'll use with our loom, and then our tassel or pom-pom maker, and the faux leather tags. And as we state in our instructions, you will need a pair of scissors. So first things first, we are going to put all except for one skein of yarn over to the side. And it says we'll need to tie our yarn onto the anchor peg of our loom. So 
let's find what is the anchor peg. The anchor peg is this little peg that's sticking out the side of the loom. There's all of these pegs that are sticking up top, but the anchor peg is actually the only peg that is sticking out the side. So there's your anchor peg. Now let's go ahead and find the end of our yarn. Now this is something that I love to do if I can actually do it. And sometimes it's easier than other times. But if you pull your yarn apart at the very end, sometimes you're able to find the end of the yarn just like that. Now why that's kind of magical and kind of fun to do is because instead of finding the end of the yarn out here, out about on the outside of the ball, if you find it on the inside, you can just pull your yarn out and your ball of yarn won't be flipping and flopping all over the place. So if you can try to find the end of your yarn by looking inside the end of your ball of yarn. So now that we did that, and if you can't, don't worry about it. It's fine to just find your end of yarn over on the outside of the yarn as well. Okay, so we want to tie this end of the yarn to our anchor peg. So it doesn't have to be a special knot and you don't actually even knot it. You just tie it once around just like that. So we have just a regular little tie with some leftover yarn here, our tail of our yarn is right here and we're just gonna let that hang. So now what we have to do, we'll look at our instructions. It says wrap the yarn around the pegs as shown. So what we're looking at is the yarn being wrapped around the back of the peg and back of the next peg and the back of the next peg and the back of the next peg. So I'll show you, it's very easy to do once you get the hang of it. So we'll pull some yarn out here. Oh, actually my yarn is a little bit twisted. So we're gonna, we're gonna go reverse for one second here. There. All right, put our yarn back on our anchor peg. There we go. Okay. So what we want to do is go around the back of the peg. And we're going around this peg right here. So here's our anchor peg. Here's our anchor peg. And we're going to the very next upright peg after our anchor peg. That's where we're gonna start. So we're gonna take our yarn, go around the peg completely and behind the next peg and around it completely and continue to just wrap our yarn around the back of the peg and around the back of the peg. So you might be asking, am I doing this right? The way you know that you're doing it right is that you can see the yarn in front of the peg is a straight line. If you see this, and I'll show you, if you go around the you can see here. If you see this instead, the crossover of the yarn, that means that you have to redo it. So what you wanna do, and I'm gonna start again, just to show everybody. You wanna go around the back of the peg and then the front. So then you just go to the next one, around the back of the peg, 
to the front. And you want your yarn to stay on the pegs so you can just like push it down a little bit so it stays on the peg. So around the back, around the front, and to the next peg. Around the back, around the front, to the next peg. Around the back, to the front, and then to the next peg. Michelle or Mary, do we have any questions out there from our viewers? I actually had a question earlier. Um, somebody has the quick knit loom, but um, didn't purchase the new hat not hate loom. Mm -hmm. And it comes those faux leather tags, which we saw when you uh, took it out of the box. Mm -hmm. um, those tags, if you want to purchase any more, are available through the lionbrand.com uh, website, and you can purchase more Hat Not Hate faux leather tags. So that's available. Thank you so much for, for that question. Um, and while you're doing this, we, we don't have any other questions right now, but I thought I'd take a few minutes and just talk about Hat Not Hate. Um, this is an anti-bullying campaign that was founded in 2018 by Shara Blumenthal, and she herself was a victim of childhood bullying. So she created this um, to raise awareness by making and wearing and sharing blue hats. The color blue represents solidarity and in support of bullying prevention. And Meredith, did you know that October is National Bullying Awareness Month? I didn't know that. Thank you for sharing that, Michelle. Yeah, so what's, what's great is this organization collects hats all year round. And right before uh, October, they do a tally to see how many blue hats they have. And then they donate that to schools all across the country. And this year, Hat Not Hate was able to um, collect, are you ready for the total of how many hats? I'm ready. Okay, there were 65,247 total hats made in the past year. Oh my gosh. That is amazing. That is so many hats. I can't believe it. That is a wonderful, that's a huge number. That's wonderful support for the hat not hate anti-bullying cause. Yes. And in fact, um, since uh, 2018, there have been 90,000 hats collected, which is wow. incredible. And I know many people at our office at Faber Castell. You know, we make hats all the time um, that we can donate back to the organization because we we just love this organization and what it's been able to do for um, those who have been bullied and those who are learning about bullying prevention. Wow, Michelle, that is amazing. I I so appreciate you sharing all that information with me and with everybody on our call today, um, I definitely support this cause 100% because I think it's so important to be kind to each other and bullying mm -hmm. is not my forte whatsoever. So any way we can support um, caring for each other and, and being aware of anti-bullying is so important and so, so important to share. And this is actually a really fun way to support that cause. So making hats, and like I said in the uh, beginning of our class, you actually get enough to make two hats. So you can, if you wanted to, you could keep a hat and then donate the other one to our cause, or you could donate both to, to the cause. So oh. it's really, it's, a, it's an amazing kit to, um, to have for this cause. Yes, you can even give it to a friend and teach a friend how to knit on a loom and create more hats together because nobody should be alone, right? We are all in this together. That's right. 
So as you were sharing all of that wonderful information, we or I went ahead and I continued to wrap our yarn around each peg. And you can see I'm at the last peg before our anchor peg here. So what we're gonna do, and we can hold our yarn and look back at our instructions. It says to wrap around the entire loom and then wrap around the entire loom again. So you should have two loops of yarn on each peg. So let's go ahead and do that. And I wanted to share this technique that actually Michelle shared with me. She calls it the Ferris wheel technique. And it's kind of like a Ferris wheel if you were to look at it sideways like this and it, you know, like how a Ferris wheel turns like that. Well, this technique, you kind of hold it like this and it's a little bit quicker to wrap your yarn around each peg just by spinning your loom like this. And I'm gonna switch hands here just so you can see a little bit better. But you kind of just wrap. And again, we're wrapping around the back, around the front, and then to the next peg. And by the way, we're, I'm not wrapping this really hard. It's just like a medium wrap. It's not too tight, because if you're to wrap it too tight, it might be difficult to do the next step. So I'm just wrapping it just enough so it stays on. Not too tight, not too loose. And I'm just going to keep going because we want one, two wraps of yarn on each peg. So doing it this way is a little bit quicker for me at least. But if you have a, a way that's more comfortable to hold your loom and to wrap your yarn, that's up to you and it's completely acceptable as well. So whatever, however you wanna hold it is the right way for you to hold it. All right, and we're already back wow. here. That was fast. I know it's, well, like I said, that was, you taught me that Michelle, you taught me that Ferris wheel <laughs> technique. So we're already back to our last peg. Now this is the part that I think is really fun or really, um, it's kind of like the, the clutch part of this, this wrapping of the yarn. So as soon as you take, and, and this is actually explained in our instructions here, number five, hook. Starting with the last wrapped peg, slide your knitting hook along the groove. Hook the bottom loop and pull it over the top loop, the peg as shown, and then release the yarn from your hook. So you can see in each of these pegs, there's a groove in here. And that groove is really, is, is meant for this little hook to fit into. So what we wanna do, I'm trying to make this as clear as I can. You put your, the tip of your hook underneath the bottom loop of yarn and you bring it over the top loop of yarn. So now there's only one loop of yarn on the peg. So I'm gonna show you again. Now why this, why this, um, hook or hooking this um, peg first is so important is because now I don't have to hold my yarn on the pegs anymore. Just doing that first loop over, now the yarn is staying on our loom easily. So after you've done the last one, I'm gonna show you, you move on to the, to the first peg the first peg after our anchor peg. So we're gonna do the exact same thing. 
put your tip of your hook underneath the bottom loop of yarn and just pull it over top of the top loop of yarn and the peg. And you just keep doing that. So Michelle, do we have anyone out there with any questions on this step? No, we don't, but maybe we could just uh, pause for a minute to see if any come, come through. Sure. And for all of you who are following along with us, you just continue to hook the bottom loop, pull it over the top loop and over the top of the peg. And you go all the way around your loom. And once you get the hang of it, it becomes quite quick. And you just keep pulling the bottom loop over the top loop and over the peg. And just to show you what it looks like inside. So this is what we've just done here. So you can see these loops are starting to be knitted together. These loops here are, are still waiting to get knitted together. So we'll continue on. And like we said, we're gonna go all the way around it, all the way around our loom. And it just becomes so quick and easy once you get the hang of it. But I'm so happy to hear from anyone out there who might have any kind of question on any part of the process that we've done so far. So uh, we do have a question um, in which Mary answered, but I think some other friends may have the same question. Mm -hmm. So the question was, what if it seems too loose? And the answer is you can just try and pull your yarn a little tighter as you wrap. And it's okay if, if one of the times it wasn't um, too tight and it was too loose. So you can just keep going and work with it. Right, and yeah, so that was a really great question. So if you think it's too loose and it might pop off the peg, just pull your yarn a little bit tight and it'll, it'll stay on the pegs as it needs to. So while you have you're another question, that, oh, go ahead. If I'm using the loom with different yarn, does the thickness of the yarn matter? From my experience, the thickness of the yarn only matters in regards to how long it will take you to create your hat. So a thicker yarn will take up more space than a thinner yarn. And therefore, the thicker yarn will create a hat possibly with less knitting involved. Or the, th the thicker yarn might also be a little bit more challenging, or it might even be a little easier to pull over the pegs. But the process will still be the same. So you'll still wrap all of your pegs with the yarn. You'll go around your loom twice and then you'll pick up the bottom loop and put it over the top and pick up the bottom loop and put it over the top around the whole loom which is what we just have completed one time those are great questions michelle are there any other questions right now no i think we're good right now thank you Okay, great. Well, we're going to keep going then. Um, so what you want to do next, and we can refer to our instructions. It says to continue knitting, wrap your loom only once this time with your yarn. When you reach the anchor peg, you should have two loops on each peg. And then follow the steps above for continuing to knit. So just like we when we started, we're gonna go ahead and, well, actually, as you can see, all of our yarn is at the top of the pegs. So we're gonna to need to 
pull these down. Pull the yarn down on the pegs so they go down towards the base of the peg instead of up at the top of the peg. So pull all of your yarn down to the base of the peg. Pulling it down. Down you go, down you go, down you go. Good, good, good. Very good. Okay, now we can go ahead. And just like we did before, starting at our first peg, we go around the back, around the front, into the next peg. Around the back, around the front, into the next peg. And you really wanna figure out a way that feels comfortable to you to try and hold the yarn on while you're wrapping. So the yarn will mostly stay wrapped because the peg has a little bit of a top to it. But just in case, I like to keep my thumb on the peg that I just wrapped to hold the yarn on just in case I wrap it a little bit loose because I don't really want all of my wrapped yarn to unravel. So I kind of find it easy to wrap, wrap the peg and then hold it with my other thumb, just like this. So in slow motion, it's wrap the peg. And as I'm coming around here, I rotate it with my hand and I put my thumb on it. So I wrap the peg and then I put my thumb on it. And that does a really good job just holding the yarn on until I wrap the next peg. So maybe then, we are about uh, 25, almost 30 minutes into the class. Mm -hmm. Should we talk about what to do when you run out of one of the skeins of yarn? Oh, sure, yeah. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and we'll continue doing this. We're gonna go around our entire um, loom and knit the bottom loop over the top loop. And then I can show you what happens when you run out of yarn from one skein of yarn and how to tie on another one. So we'll do this nice and quickly. And from my experience with this kit, I did run out of yarn before it was time, um, before I was done with the, the length of my hat. So I needed about a quarter more of another skein of yarn. So I will show you guys what that looks like. All right, we're almost to our Last peg right here. And that's our last peg. All right, again, we're gonna just scoop all of those loops down, 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 down. Scooting them all down. And there we go. So we're gonna pretend that I'm looping, I'm looping, and uh-oh, I just ran out of yarn. So we're gonna pretend that we just ran out of yarn. So we'll say this is the end of one of our balls of yarn. And so we're, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a second ball of yarn, and we're gonna find the tip of it. And all you have to do is tie each end together like in a knot. We don't want this yarn to come apart. So 
So you just tie it together. Just like that. So it doesn't look pretty right now, but once you finish your hat, we can do something about that. And what you do is you, you basically just tuck it into the hat so then nobody even sees it. But you just tie your two ends of your yarn, yarn together. And then you can just continue wrapping your yarn with your new skein of yarn. Thank you. You're very welcome. That was a great question. I'm so glad you brought that up. We have another question. Um, how long would you say one hat generally takes? And I know from personal experience, the first couple of times that you do it, um, it may take longer as you're getting in, in the flow of it. Um, so it just depends on if you're a beginner, um, and any other advice maybe? Right, so I, I totally agree with you, Michelle. That's a, a really good point. So even just wrapping the loom, the more you do it, the easier it gets and the less time it takes. So for me, I don't make many hats. I've made probably a handful of hats and it takes me about, two to two and a half hours to complete a hat with a little pom-pom or tassel on it. Um, and what I do is I just put on a podcast or I put on a, um, put on a movie or a television show that I like or some music that I like. And um, you just kind of, you, you get to be entertained while you're creating. So that's, my favorite thing to do is just put on a, um, a movie that I like. So half of my attention is toward the movie and half of my attention is toward creating. So this is really meditative after a while and you don't really have to think too hard about it because you're doing the same motion um, over and over until you get the length of the hat that you need. So with that in mind, I'd like to share with you how long um, we recommend making your hat so it will fit over your head or over your friend's head. And um, it's just a recommendation. So if you know you have a friend with a smaller head or your head is smaller, you might not need to make it as big. Or if you know someone has a larger head, you might want to put a couple more um, knits to it. So let's put our loom down here and refer to our instructions. There we go. All right. So it says down here, stop knitting when your hat is around eight and a half inches long. There should be one loop left on each of the pegs. So I went ahead and I, I knitted most of a hat last night. And you can see that my hat here, well, actually I'll show you. At the bottom of our instructions, it's really handy. We have a measuring tool down here and it goes, all the way to 15 inches. So from one end to the other end is 15 inches. So we can just count out eight inches. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, which is right after the crease of the instructions. So we can see how long my hat is around about, which I am about at eight inches. So I would say I need to go a couple more rounds in order to make it eight and a half inches. So I would like to show you as well, with this wonderful yarn, 
it has this natural ability to just kind of curl up a little bit um, at the end that you've, you've been um, knitting. And this creates a really nice little rim for your hat. So you don't really have to try to undo it. You can just like let it naturally fold up like that. And if you wanted an accurate measurement, I do recommend unrolling it just to see what your actual hat is. So with this unrolled, I think we're just about at eight and a half. So what I'm gonna do next is show you how to take your hat off of the loom. So what we're gonna do, we'll look at our instructions again. And it says, use the needle threader to thread the working yarn through the large plastic needle. And what we wanna do is um, up here, step one, measure 45 inches extra of your working yarn and cut. So our working yarn is the yarn that is attached to our loom. It's the, the yarn that we've been um, wrapping around each of the pegs. So this is our working yarn. And like I mentioned, we have this handy dandy measuring tool at the bottom of our instructions that is 15 inches. So we're going to need 45 inches. So here's 15. And then we'll pull out another 15, which is 30. And then another 15, which is 45. So once you have measured your 45 inches, go ahead and cut that loose from your ball of yarn. And we'll put that to the side. Now, what we need is our needle and you get this cool little blue plastic needle and something called a needle threader, which is over here in this little packet. And the needle threader is this little blue, thin little blue, handy dandy tool that looks really, it's kind of hard to see. Um, it's really easy to use. All you do is you take the end of your yarn, put it through the needle threader. So here's the needle threader. Let's see if I can get that more. There's our needle threader. You put the yarn through the needle threader. See how it's hanging? And then take your needle threader and thread the eye of the large blue plastic needle and you pull the yarn through. So that makes it really easy to thread a needle. So that's what that is. All right. So what we're gonna do is sew the yarn through each of our loops. So what that looks like is just like we put our hook in this um, area of the peg, that's where we're gonna put our needle. So we're gonna sew through each of our pegs with our needle. So it's kind of like, I believe it's called a whip stitch. So you just go like this. And then we're going from the bottom of the peg to the top. And you just pull it through like that. And just to show you what that looks like. So we're going from the bottom of the peg with our needle up through the, up through the leaf of yarn and pulling, pulling, pulling our yarn through. And you just do it again. So you go from the bottom of the peg underneath the loop of yarn and pull it, I think I'm copying it. Pull it all the way through. 
So you just keep doing this all the way around your loom, peg by peg. And we're basically casting off our loom. So we're just making sure none of these loops are left behind. We are gathering them all with this one piece of yarn using our needle. And again, this is what it looks like here. We've got all of these sewn together with our needle. And we just keep going. Just like this. And this is really the exciting part is getting closer and closer to go, having gone through all of your loops of yarn because the next step is super fun. It's kind of nerve wracking at first, but it's also super fun to see the result. Would you agree, Michelle? Yes. <laughs> it, my favorite part isn't necessarily taking it off of the loom when you pull the string. Um, you pull the yarn so that it makes that hat. Mm -hmm. very satisfying. Yes, I agree. So we're going. So have you used your loom to make other colors of hats as well? I have. Uh, recently, I let my daughters pick out their own colors um, at Michael's. And I made them each a new one for the winter. Oh, yay. Yeah, they have some really beautiful yarns, um, Lion Brand Yarn and Michael's. They have some yarn that has like sparkles in it, like a glittery thread through the yarn. And that's gorgeous. I just love the sparkle to it. It's really pretty. Um, there we go. And I think that would make a really pretty hat as well. They probably even have blue with a little bit of sparkle in there. That would be cool. All right, I'm in the last quarter of my hat here. Last quarter of the loom. Goes on the other side. There we go. And this loom is so um, easy to use. And you can, there's other designs that you can actually do. Like you can knit different things with this loom as well, which is outstanding. So this kit is pretty wonderful because you can continue to use the loom over and over and make hats and other items with it. So yes, and this is uh, a nine inch loom and it is designed to fit uh, most uh, school age children. That's very good to know. Okay, so we're back. And what it says in our instructions, we're back to the very last peg. Now it says to go through the first peg one more time. So we'll go through the first peg one more time. Just like that. And now it says, remove your piece from the loom. All right, here we go. So to remove your piece from the loom, you just take each of the loops off of the peg and just pull it right over the top of the peg. <laughs> and this is the part that's kind of nerve wracking a little bit because 
just in case you like missed a loop, you know, that's, that, that's what worries me the most, but I, I was pretty attentive to making sure I got each of the loops. So I'm hoping that it all works out okay. And we can share that very exciting part of pulling our string to create the hat successfully with you. Almost there. Almost there. <laughs> <laughs> and we're there. Okay. There we taking, go. Taking the loom away. And the next thing it says. Oh, it actually says to turn your hat inside out. Okay. So we turned it inside out. And here you can see where I did tie the yarn together. Um, okay, so the next part here, pull the yarn you just sewed until your knitted piece is completely closed. So let's see if we can get a good shot of this. Ready? I'm gonna hold and pull. And one more pull. That's awesome. <laughs> Yay, it worked. We did a good job, Michelle. We did a good job, Mary. All right, so we, we did it and it, the top is completely closed. It says, use the needle to sew the hole shut. Tie a knot, a tight knot to close it and then trim the excess yarn. So um, it doesn't exactly say how you should um, sew the top of the hat shut. So what I'm gonna do is just go directly across from where our yarn is with my needle and put the needle in and kind of just do my best because I, I don't sew often. And I'm just gonna stick it in to right across from where my yarn is, just like that and pull it, pull it closed. So now I don't have to hold it. So you can see that one little stitch is holding it closed. And you can pull it nice and tight so it stays closed. And at this point, I'm going to um, pull my yarn through my needle a little bit more. So I have more control over what I'm sewing. All right, so I pulled it through one time. I'm gonna go ahead and go across the hat again with another stitch. I'll just go all the way across like that. Somehow I've gotten stuck on something, I don't know what. Actually, maybe if I cut that. Okay, and then go across one more time to keep it nice and shut. And then just tie it in a knot. Well, I'm going to go across one more time and then tie it in a knot. Because I like to be super cautious. So I have this little bit of a loop that I've just sewn. I'm going to bring my needle up through it and that's going to create a knot. I'm going to do that again. And just knot it like that. Another way you can do it is to just tie, tie the two ends together. So you can actually just tie the two pieces that you were sewing the top of the hat together with. You can just take your needle off and just sew the two pieces together like this. All right. Now it says what we want to do 
unite your beginning anchor peg yarn from your hand. Oh, untie. So we already did that. We already untied our, we already went ahead. Now, congratulations, you have just made a hat. Turn the hat right side out and follow the next steps to add a tassel or a pom-pom. So here's our, ooh, I can, I can trim this. We don't need that anymore. Here's our wonderful, beautiful hat. All right, can we have a front facing shot, please? Yay, okay, so you can see that the hat we just made looks a lot like the hat that I have on. So we were completely successful with our hat making. And I hope you're sharing this wonderful experience with me as well. So, okay, we'll go overhead again and I'll show you guys how to apply this cute little tag to your hat. So we'll come back to making a, a tassel or a pom-pom, but I wanna show you because this is something unique that is very unique to the Hat Not Hate cause is putting our Hat Not Hate little label on our hat. So like I was mentioning, this yarn, um, once you knit it like this, it has the tendency to just start to roll up a little bit. Now I'm gonna trim this too. So as it rolls up a little bit, you can put your little tag around the roll. So what you do with the logo facing you, wrap the tag around the bottom rim of your hat. And then you just kind of wrap it around and you'll see there's a, a hole up here. So you're taking this part of the tag and you're gonna put it through that hole, just like that. I'll do it closer to the camera so you can see. So here's where your rim of your hat will be. You just go under it and it just pops right through. Pops right through like that. So we'll do that down here. Around the rim of your hat. Super easy. And then it pops right through. Here we go. Here it is. Ta-da! So here's our hat not hate little tag. And you want to put that on before you send your hats in. Um, because that really finishes the hat and makes it look professional. Um, now in our instructions, we have two ways to add a little bit of fanciness up on the top of your hat. One way is to make a pom-pom, which is what we have here. And then the other way is to make a tassel, just like that. So let's go ahead and make a pom-pom. And what you'll need is this fun little pom-pom maker. So it says to wrap your yarn around the tassel slash pom-pom maker about 25 times as shown. So you're gonna go like this. There's our yarn, there it is. So you're gonna hold the yarn like this and go around. 25 times, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. Now cut 10 inches. 10 inch piece of yarn. So 10 inches is about here. And then tightly knot this piece of yarn around what you just wrapped. So we're gonna go 
in here, this little area where there's, we just made a little bit of a gap. And I'm gonna put the end of my 10 inch piece of yarn through there. And, and if you want a fuller pom-pom, you can wrap it even more than the 25 times. Right, you are so right. Um, and then you just tie it around in a nice little knot, tie it nice and tight, as tight as you can. Yeah, I love making pom-poms. They're really easy and fun. So there's that. And then use your scissors to cut the top and the bottom ends of your yarn that you just wrapped around. So it's good to have a nice sharp pair of scissors to do this. But even with very well-worn scissors, it's, easy, it's, it's doable. And like this. Ta-da! Now you just have to fluff it like that. <laughs> this is a really funny pom-pom. It's, um, oh, there we go, it's beautiful. Okay, now you can see I've got some crazy strings down here. And what I'm gonna do is keep two of those long strings long and then kind of trim the other ones that I don't want as long. And if you wanted it to make it even puffier, you can kind of unravel some of the yarn and it'll get this type of like fun fluffy effect. But right now, since we don't have a lot of time, I'm gonna show you how to put this onto your hat. So where's our hat? Here we are. So I'm going to just go ahead and take one of these pieces of yarn, one of the long pieces of yarn, and kind of shove it through the top of my hat. So I don't know if you can see my finger. Where's my finger? I'm going to put this piece of yarn in that little hole and bring it through like that. And then with this piece, this other long piece of yarn, I'm going to shove it through another little hole like that. So I'm, I've got both, both pieces of long yarn at the top of my hat. I'm gonna turn our hat inside out and then just tie those two pieces together. Oops, got a little bit hard. Into a knot. And then we'll, ta-da! Fabulous. <laughs> now, are you, you going to donate little... that one or do you have somebody in mind who could use a hat and a hat eight hat? Oh my gosh, I'm definitely going to donate this one, yes. Woohoo! That's yeah. exciting. Yeah, so we have about, oh, three seconds left. Thank you <laughs> so much, everybody, for joining us. And I hope that you enjoyed creating our fun hat not hate hats as much as I did. And I hope you continue to create and share them with your friends or donate them or keep one for yourself. And Michelle, do you have anything else to share? Just a big thank you for spending your Saturday with us with Create to Be for Kids and Lime Brand Yarn and Michael's, of course. So thank you, everyone. We really appreciate it. Thank you. Bye-bye.